Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's video let's have a little look into our different available TCAS modes. So we've got four different modes over here which are threat, all, above and below. You can see we've just leveled off at our cruising altitude of 26,000 feet today and we are now going to do the first switching of the TCAS mode for our flight and this is switching it from above to below. But why do we do that? Alright, let's go right into it. So, the TCAS on the Airbus, as well as on many modern Boeings as well, by the way, and with modern I mean like within the past 20 years, in flight simulation it is a little bit of a misconception that only Airbus has this feature. Most Boeings have it as well, even though unfortunately PMDG only models it on the 747-8, which is the reason why many people seem to think that Boeings don't have it in flight simulation. But let's get back to the topic. So, we normally use the above mode for our takeoff and climb. The reason behind that is that using above mode we can see traffic that is not only within plus or minus 2800 feet of our altitude like we would normally see, but we can actually see traffic up to 7900 feet above our altitude. That makes it much easier to anticipate for possible threats during our climb out. Once we reach cruising altitude then, we switch it over into the below mode. The idea behind that on the other end side is that traffic that's above us doesn't usually matter during cruise. However, what does very much matter is traffic that is actually located below us because in case we might need to start an emergency descent or in case we need for whatever reason to do a rapid descent, traffic that's located below us is very much of interest. Now. There is another mode available that might seem useful here, and that is the all mode. And all actually shows us all the traffic there is, plus or minus 7,900 feet of our aircraft. Now, in flight simulation, it would probably make sense to use that, because it gives you a very good idea of all the surroundings around you. In the real world, however, using that mode would really clutter your display with a lot of different targets and make it very hard to filter out any aircraft that might really be relevant for your consideration and your flight. There is one more mode when we talk about relevance and that is the threat mode. Now threat is going to remove any aircraft from your display that does not pose an immediate threat to you aka any aircraft that is not proximate traffic or actually conflicting traffic like one causing a traffic advisory or even worse a resolution advisory. Now these are the four different modes we have available. As I mentioned threat and all are basically not really being used too much in the real world but the two relevant modes are above for whenever you are climbing and then below for cruise and the descent. So Let's lastly talk about the modes that we have available on our right, and then we have already pretty much covered the TCAS. So we've got the TARA mode, which is the one that we're using by default in the air. TARA stands for Traffic Advisory and Resolution Advisory. In this mode, we are basically running full TCAS functionality. However, we also have a Traffic Advisory only mode, which is then also being announced to us on the navigation display by the TA only that we see over here. The traffic advisory only mode is basically providing the same as full functionality but minus the resolution advisories. Now you might be asking yourself why do we have such a mode at all and are we using it for anything? Yes, we are. However, not during normal operation of the aircraft. Only during abnormal operation, that is when the TA TA only mode really becomes relevant with the exception that when you have known VFR traffic on an approach that might cause you a nuisance resolution advisory then you might also switch it over to TA only mode. However the primary use of TA only is for emergencies. It is designed so that when you have an engine failure and when your aircraft performance therefore is degraded your TCAS is not going to give you any commands that you might not be able to carry out. That most importantly includes climb commands, which you may not be able to comply with when flying on a single engine. So, I do hope that you learned something on this one. Lastly, I'm going to give you a little trick 
over which you can easily tell on the ground whether your TCAS is active or not. On the ground you will always have the TA only bar down here and that is because resolution advisories are obviously not available when your aircraft is stationary on the runway. Now, how can you tell then easily on the ground whether your TCAS is actually in TARA mode or if it's only in TA mode since you're getting the same indication down here? Remember, your switch might always be broken and just because the switch is in the TARA position that does not necessarily mean that the system is actually operating in that mode. So what can you do then? Well, quite easy. Have a look at your navigation display. There is a hidden clue over there as to what mode the TCAS is in. So, I'm going to make a switching now. Have a close look at the ND and look at what changes. You can see that when I'm actually switching TCAS off, that little 2.5 mile ring that you have over here actually switches to a different mode and actually changes its shape. And that is your clue whether the TCAS is operating or not. So, with all of that, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, everyone. Hope you learned something. And as always, if you did like the video, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you're up for more. I'm looking forward to your input, and if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and see you all again on the next one.